Okay, thank you for joining me in this particular message, which I have entitled, There is no such thing as sin. Glory to God. So we're just acknowledging now, Father God, in Christ Jesus, and thank you, Lord, for your Spirit of Christ, teaching us all things and guiding us into all truth. Amen. Okay, you might think that's a crazy title for a message, No Such Thing as Sin. It's bound to bring trouble. But bear with me and we go through some of these verses, okay? And you'll see where I'm coming from here. Okay, I'm starting off with... Uh, I'm going to start off with... First Corinthians. There it is there. Chapter 1, verse 30. So it says, But of him, that's God, but of God, you are in Christ Jesus. Okay? There it is there. We are in Christ. God has put us or placed us into Christ. That is saying nothing else other than that. Okay. Who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. It was simply stated, he didn't give us these things of holiness, which is sanctification. And he didn't give us righteousness. Or he didn't give us redemption. He became those things for us. So we are those things in him. And he is those things in us. That's what it means to be in Christ Jesus. That we are in him and he is in us. And that is a permanent fixture in the eyes of God. That's so important. Before God, that is permanent. The most important thing is, can we hold on to that? In the eyes of God and not in our own eyes. Thank you, Father. That as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So we couldn't find any sin in that verse. So there's no sin in Christ there. No sin. <clears throat> okay. So there's no, we're in Christ Jesus. There's no sin there. Glory to God. I'm just going to go to the next one. One John chapter three, verse five. Okay, and you know it says, I'm reading by the way from the New King James Version, and you know it says that He was manifest to take away our sins, and in Him there is no sin. Okay, so now we're told that sins, He was manifest to take away sins, and that's exactly what He did. He is the Lamb of God. He took away the sin of the world when He died on the cross. Everybody and all sin died with him there. So sin has been taken away. So there's no sin there. And we're looking for it to find out where it is. Because the, the word sin appears in the Bible many, many times in the New Testament. Also, so I can't find it in that verse. I mean, glory to God, there's no sin there. And then it says, and in him there is no sin. So we know that in Christ there is no sin. But wait a minute, that's where we are. We are in him. God of God are we in Christ Jesus. That's God's doing. So there you go. We're in him and in the place of no sin. No sin in us there. Glory to God. Okay, let's move on. We're sure to find it somewhere. Hallelujah. Book ribbons. So we go to the next one. Verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. There it is there, underlined. Okay, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, and all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, is there any sin in that, in the new creation? Surely, you're not going to tell me there's sin in the new creation. Glory to God. All things have passed away, and that again includes sin and the flesh. All of these things have passed away. Glory to God and brought in has brought in an entirely new creation. This is very, very important. I know you're familiar with these verses, but it's very, very important. <clears throat> God has put us into and made new creations of us and put us into the new creation. And that's where he sees us. That's where we are in his eyes. He doesn't see us wandering out on that. That's where we stand. Because that's what grace grace has put us. We are under grace as far as God is concerned and he's not looking upon us or upon our works and thinking, oh look, there they go again. 
No, that's not the way he sees us. He sees what his own work of what he's done. Jesus has presented us perfect before the Father and he accepts nothing else. And that's the only way he sees us. That's the only way the Father sees us. He recognizes the work of Christ. That's where he sees us. Now the problem arises if we refuse to believe that and we, we look upon sin and try to find sin where it's not. It's not there. Even verse 18, I didn't underline them, all things are of God. There you go. In the resurrection, all things are of God, so there's no sin there. Goodness me. We'll have we'll we'll go to the next one and see what happens. Okay. Matthew six. Okay. So we couldn't find any sin. So where is sin then? Okay. People say they're committing sins and they have to be forgiven for their sins and they get prayer for their sins and all kinds of things. But look what it says here. The lamp, the, the lamp of the body, verse 22, Matthew chapter 6. The lamp of the body is the eye. Aha! Now we're seeing. Now we have found out where sin is. Sin is in the eye of the beholder. That's exactly where it is. Glory to God. It's not in the eye of God. God sees us. Okay. In the new creation. In Christ where he put us. And he refuses to see us anywhere else. Because the old things as far as he is concerned. Has passed away. But why do we keep thinking. That are not. So it's very clear. Sin is only in our eye. Glory to God. Which really has no substance. Unless we act according to what we see. And we give it the substance. If therefore your eye is good, meaning it's single, it doesn't see good and evil, it only sees the goodness in God and all things are passed away and it only sees all things have become new, then your eye is good. Then your whole body will be full of light. And there it is. There's no sin there either. But if your eye is bad, uh -huh, now we're finding it where sin is. It's in your eye. You might think that's a smart answer. It's not a smart answer. It's up there, it's in front of you. It's simple truth. If your eye is bad, if you're seeing sin in yourself and seeing it in other people and in the world, then your eye is bad. God has changed all of that. Hallelujah. If your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. And that's what happens. The sin appears then. Because you are and you, you are giving it credibility, you are giving it substance. You are responding to it because as far as you're concerned, it exists. But not before God. Do you remember that story with Abraham? Okay. If Abraham <clears throat> would be justified by the things that he was doing and by his works, <clears throat> okay, it would not be before God, the Bible says. That's very important. The way God sees things is everything to us. If God sees me as righteous, who am I to disagree with him? My opinion is not higher than God's. Okay? His is the opinion. Glory to God. That's what counts. So there you go. If therefore the light that is, if your body will be full of darkness if your eye is bad. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And that's what happens. You keep seeing it in yourself and everywhere. And you keep wrestling with it because you've seen it. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Glory to God. Thank you, Father God. We go to Colossians. Chapter 3, verse 3. So it's in your eye. But look, you have died. For you died. And your eye has died with you. So even from that point of view, your sinful eye is gone, it's passed away, it died with you. It's not that you have to die, you have died. You've died in Christ, so God is not recognising even your evil eye. He doesn't go with what you see, he goes with what he sees. So when are you going to, when are you going to stop seeing sin? God is not taking account of it, why should you take account of it? Glory to God. This is very important, this is, this is life or death this is very very important 
you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. In Christ, your life is where there is no sin. In God, there's no sin there. And that's where your life is. And that's the only, that's a good eye. That's, that is not about it. It's a good eye to see what God has done, accept it and recognize nothing else. Do you know that verse? 2 Corinthians 5, 16. I haven't got it underlined here. But it says, <clears throat> we recognize no man after the flesh. Because God does not recognize anybody after the flesh. Therefore, that's where we stand. And we entertain nothing else. Okay, let's move on. Thank you, Father. This is glorious, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. We go to Titus. Oh, oh look at this one. Oh, this is, oh, this one goes to the root of the problem. <clears throat> Titus chapter 1, verse 15. To the pure, all things are pure. There you go. That means if you're seeing sin in your life and in the lives of other people and in the world, it's because you're not pure. Again, it's a bad eye. Your eyes are bad. You're seeing things out of the flesh and therefore you'll have to wrestle with flesh and blood. You're wrestling with your own flesh and blood. You're giving substance to sin when it has no substance at all. It has been destroyed. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. To the pure, all things are pure. And I am pure because my eye has been changed and I'm seeing all things as pure. I don't recognize sin. And therefore, there is no such thing as sin. It's only sin to those who see sin. Sin only exists for those who see it. As far as God is concerned, he put it away for me. He put it out of his presence. He put it out of my presence because I'm in his presence. So therefore, there's no more sin. Where did it go? It got buried with Jesus. He became sin for me. Thank you, Father. But, he says, to those who are defiled, see that part there, you're still defiled. You haven't accepted the righteousness of God. And unbelieving, you're not believing what God has done. Nothing is pure. You will be going like that all of your life until you come into faith. Nothing will be pure. The Holy Spirit bears witness to this, by the way. This is not something you have to walk at and keep doing yourself. It's something that you believe and then the Holy Spirit will bear witness to the word of God because you're just believing it. That's the truth. To those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. And look at what says that even their mind and their conscience are defiled. They're still conscious of sin. And it's still in their thinking. Oh, goodness me. If that's not a truth, nothing is. Look what it says in verse 16. They profess to know God. Gosh, we know many of them. But in their works they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and disqualified for every good work. They disqualify themselves because they see sin. Okay, let's move on. Thank you, Father God. Glory to God. James chapter 3. Oh, this is getting worse. Verse 17. The wisdom that is from above is first of all pure. There it is. Glory to God. Again, to the pure, all things are pure. Why? Because they're moving in the wisdom from above. They're believing what God has done. That's the wisdom of God, wisdom from above. Heavenly wisdom. It's then peaceable. And of course that brings peace. God is at peace with us. I'm not wrestling with flesh and blood. Or with God. I believe him. Or with the devil. The devil has nothing in me. There's no such thing as sin. I'm at peace. God is at peace with me. God loves me. It's gentle. I don't have to push and shove and convince people. I can be gentle. Willing to yield. Of course, I yield all the more readily and easily. Full of mercy, ready to have mercy because I see that God has taken away all people's sins and he wants to have mercy and therefore I am full of mercy. And good fruits. There's good fruits in what I'm saying. Without partiality, I'm not partial with people because God has dealt with all men the same. All have died in Christ and all have been declared righteous. They just need to wake up to it. And without hypocrisy, I'm not two things at once. I'm not a sinner. I'm not thinking about myself as being a sinner, trying to be righteous. There's not two people living in me. I'm not, it's not, not hypocritical. Just one. 
A single eye is non-hypocritical. A single eye. I'm not serving, going to serve two masters. No, he says, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. There it is there. There are peace with all men because God has made peace with men. And you're making peace by those who make peace. Glory to God. Isn't it lovely? Thank you, Father God. Okay. The next verse is... Galatians, uh oh, verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that is what he will reap. And that's what happens when somebody sees sin. They're sowing it. They're giving it substance. When it has no substance, they're giving it credibility. They're listening to it, <clears throat> looking for it, hearing it, okay? Glory to God. They haven't come to the place of, of knowing that God has declared them righteous so the things that they're sowing they're reaping and they will keep on telling there is sin I'm experiencing sin because you you sow it and therefore you reap it it all depends on what you sow <clears throat> if you refuse to acknowledge sin you're sowing good seed because that's what God has done can you hear it the seed of there's no sin in God's seed so the right the word the seed of the word of God is the righteousness of God that's his seed. There's no sin in that. So sow that. That's what we should be sowing. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We go to the next one. You can see all these verses. They're all bearing witness with one another. Connecting up in the Spirit of God bearing witness. Thank you, Father God. Okay, and I'm going to Colossians 1.11. Look at this. Past tense. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. This is Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness, past tense, and conveyed us or translated us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. That's where you are. That's the only eye that you have is for the kingdom of God. Glory to God. And stop putting sin between you and God when He has taken it away. Your sin or anybody else's sin. <clears throat> and stop listening to accusations and condemnation and putting it between yourself and God. There is nothing between you and God. God has made us one with himself. Okay. Into the kingdom of the son of his love. Therefore his love is lavished upon us. And will be for all the ages to come. In whom we have redemption. Past tense. We have been redeemed out of the old creation. Out of sin. Through his precious blood that forgiveness of sins. There it is. All gone. All forgiven. Passed away. Why would you even be looking for it? The problem is you're still living at the old address. You haven't moved into the new address where there's no sin. And stay at your new address. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Okay, another one. There's John 16, verse 13. And there it is, the Spirit of God. When he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Glory to God. That's what truth is reality. The word truth is reality. <clears throat> Sin only exists <clears throat> in, in an illusionary world, which you've been taken out of. It's died, it's passed away, and therefore... If you have to give it life, the only way sin can exist is if you give it life by listening to it. And giving it your attention. But the Spirit of God will not bear witness to that. He only bear witness to you <clears throat> when you sow the right seed and give attention to his kingdom and to his voice. Okay? And keep looking unto the Lord Jesus in faith, believing there is no sin. Glory to God. Thank you, Father God. The Spirit will then continue to lead you into the reality of those words. And that experience will be yours. Thank you, Lord. Another one down now. Ephesians 6, 12. Stand therefore, having girded your waist. There it is there. With truth. That's reality. You girded, you put on that belt of truth. With a single eye and refuse to see anything else only the righteousness of God. And that's where you stand. Thank you, Father God. That's why Paul says, Stand there for having girded your waist 
with truth. That belt of truth holds all the other armour in place. If that breaks, it's all gone. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. There you go. Past tense. Did you put on that righteousness? If you did, then you're the righteousness of God. You're holy and you're blameless. Faultless, without blame, in his sight. That's the only way you can see yourself. Because that's the way God sees you. He's not looking at you or examining you to see how well you're doing. He's not doing those things. He's not judging you at all. That's what grace is. You're under grace. It's glorious. It's incredible. It's glorious. Thank you, Father God. Is there another verse? <clears throat> no, that's okay. That's all we needed. That's all. Thank you, Lord. That's uh, sufficient. I hope you can hear this. I hope you have heard it. Thank you for joining with me. Remember, God recognises no man after the flesh, especially you that's listening to this. So stop recognising yourself after the flesh. You're a spiritual being. You have been born again and you've been placed in his kingdom. Amen. Thank you for listening.